Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Blackview DR752 channel LTE. This is essentially an upgraded version of the DR750S, except for the fact that instead of relying on an external Wi-Fi hotspot and internet connection in order to give you all the cloud features, uh, you now have the ability to just pop a SIM card directly into the dash cam so it has its own internet connection to really simplify the whole experience of actually getting your dash cam connected to the cloud. <laughs> Now, full disclosure, this is not a paid or sponsored video. I've never done those and I never will. Uh, the dash cam that I'm taking a look at was a review sample that was sent to me from Blackview early so that I have some time to uh, test the dash cam and share my thoughts with you, both good and bad. Uh, if you'd like to purchase a dash cam, they're now available. And so I'm gonna have some affiliate links down in the video description, which you can use that do support my channel. Plus you're also gonna find the coupon code Vortex20 that you can type in at checkout, which will save you 5% off the price of the dash cam. Now, diving right into things, the dash cam records at 1080p front and rear. Uh, the front camera can record at 60 FPS and the rear is gonna record at 30. Video quality overall is okay. It's not mind blowing, but it's gonna do a reasonably good job of recording everything that you need around you. I personally wish instead Blackview had bumped this up to 4K or at least 1440p uh, to give it a higher resolution and more detail, but the internals here are the same as what you'll find in the DR750S. And so the dash cam here is also gonna record at 1080p front and rear. Now, one of the upsides I think of having a lower resolution dash cam, something that doesn't record in 4K, is the fact that, well, you've got fewer pixels and so each pixel is bigger, can gather more light, and that combined with the fact that they're also using the same Sony Starvis sensor means that the low light sensitivity here is really Really good. The dash cam is going to do a great job of actually recording everything at night as well. So there is a bit of a trade off from maximum resolution in favor of better low light sensitivity. And other than that, it's got a lot of the other standard Blackview stuff, including GPS built in, uh, as well as Wi Fi. Blackview has my favorite parking mode functionality available. Plus, it's also got spoken event notifications to let you know when something important happened while you were gone. An impact was detected during parking mode. Now, there's definitely gonna be some notable differences here compared to the DR750S though. Uh, the first thing, taking a look at the dash cam, you'll notice it's definitely bigger and looks different than the DR750S. Uh, this is for two reasons. Number one, uh, there's now a new LTE chip and new antennas inside the dash cam. That combined with the fact that some Blackview dash cams have had a tendency of overheating in hotter weather, Plus now you have the extra components and hardware inside. They really wanted to make sure it had proper cooling. So uh, there's additional vents and cooling now built into the DR750 LTE. Now what's new with the whole LTE thing and why is it different than maybe the DR750S or DR900S, basically Blackview's previous dash cams that had Wi-Fi built in? Well, if you've got a dash cam that connects to the cloud via Wi-Fi, it's a little bit trickier to get that all set up. Some cars already have a Wi-Fi hotspot built in, which works great when you're driving, but typically those turn off when you're parked. So they're not gonna work for any sort of parking parking mode cloud functionality. Uh, if you don't have that, or you also want parking mode stuff, uh, you can put in your own Wi-Fi hotspot into your car, which is what I've done with mine, and your dash cam can connect to the cloud that way. You also gotta make sure that you choose a hotspot that automatically turns on with your car when you start driving, so you don't have to push the power button every time. And you also, of course, wanna make sure it has power while you're parked so it can stay on and give you all the parking mode cloud capabilities. And then, of course, you have to make sure you've got all the right accessories and proper cabling and everything to make this happen. Now, the way that I've accomplished this running for the past couple years is I've got a Blackview DR900 S up front, as well as a DR750S in the rear. Now, they're both two channel dash cams, and so I take what's normally their rear cameras and I point them out either side, so now I have a full 360 degree view. Now, to power my four dash cams, I've got some battery packs in the rear of my vehicle, and these also power my dedicated Wi Fi hotspot so that my dash cams can connect to the cloud that way. That way, everything is powered both when I'm driving as well as when I'm parked. Now, the new DR750 two channel LTE is designed to pretty much simplify this whole process. Uh, you're still, of course, gonna need power for the dash cam, but you now have the ability to pick up a SIM card, pop it into the dash cam, and the dash cam has its own kind of Wi Fi hotspot or, well, internet connection, we could say, built directly into the dash cam, which simplifies the whole process. And then once you get the SIM card popped into the dash cam and then you go into the app to activate it, there's no extra additional hardware required to give you the cloud capabilities. Now, as far as how to get it activated and set up, Blackview actually has a great step-by-step -step tutorial available on their website, and I'll link you to that down in the video description. Plus, towards the end of this video, I'll go ahead and walk you through the whole process as well so that you can see what all is involved. Now, as far as pros and cons with going for a dash cam that has LTE built in versus maybe the traditional one that has Wi-Fi built in and then connects to an external Wi-Fi hotspot, let's quickly look at that next. If you have the LTE built directly into the dash cam, again, it's gonna be much easier to set up and you've got kind of an all-in-one packaged solution. 
Plus you don't have the extra hardware that you have to buy and set up, which is great. It also means that you don't have that separate Wi-Fi hotspot running and draining your car battery, uh, which then would give you longer parking recording times. Now it also solves one of the issues that I've seen with the Wi-Fi only dash cams, and that is uh, when your phone connects to the dash cam over Wi-Fi, with previous dash cams, it would actually prevent your phone from being able to connect to the internet at all because it was trying to connect through the internet uh, from the dash cam and the dash cam doesn't have an internet connection. What's nice now with the new LTE dash cam is because of the fact that the dash cam actually has an internet connection, when your phone connects to the dash cam, your phone is still gonna actually be able to connect to the internet. The dash cam effectively kind of acts as a Wi-Fi hotspot for the phone that's connected to it. However, and this has been kind of a point of confusion, you can't connect additional devices to the dash cam to have it serve as a hotspot for multiple devices. Uh, once you have one phone connected, if you try to connect a second phone, uh, it'll actually error out and not let you connect to the dash cam's Wi-Fi hotspot. Plus the dash cam itself will actually error out and let you know that there's a device connected and you can't connect a new device. Direct Wi-Fi connection already in use. This then brings me to the advantage of having a dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot in your car. And the biggest advantage of this is that you can connect multiple devices, such as say you have multiple dash cams because you want additional camera angles in your car. You can do that if you have a dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot. Plus, if you wanna connect additional devices, I've also got uh, my radar detector connected to Wi-Fi. I often run a second phone to run JBV1 and my other phones have an internet connection. I know a lot of parents like to use it, maybe if they got their kids in the back of the car, so their phones or tablets can be connected to play games and whatnot, and I actually use the Wi-Fi hotspot as well when I've got family in town, uh, and if they're from out of the country and they don't have US data, they can just hop on my in-car Wi-Fi and have access to WhatsApp and everything else they need. And so the big benefit of going through the extra work to get a dedicated Wi-Fi hotspot is that you can connect multiple devices versus if you have uh, LTE built directly into the dash cam, you can connect one phone, which is often sufficient for most people, plus it makes the dash cam connectivity way, way easier when everything is just built into one unit. Now, taking a quick step back here, let's talk about maybe why you would want cloud connectivity in your dash cam in the first place. Now, I've been using it here for quite a while, and here's some of the main benefits that I've noticed. First, I really like the fact that in case something happens to my car while it's parked, I can get notifications pushed directly to me. I'll get a notification on my phone saying an impact is detected. Uh, I can see the photo, or I can go ahead and pull up the video of the event. I can also just get the notification right here on my Apple Watch to see that something happened at a glance. Now, when something happens, I can just always remotely tap into the dash cam to see what's going on, uh, either in real time right now or the recorded event of what triggered that event. Plus, in case maybe let's say the dash cam gets stolen because somebody was breaking into my car, that video clip can automatically get pushed directly to the cloud. So in case I lose the dash cam, I still have the video evidence, including what was going on, on, hopefully the person's face, their vehicle, anything like that to report to police. If I'm at home and the car is maybe parked in the garage, I can easily just tap into the dash cam and grab any footage that was important that I wanted to save throughout the day. Now, I can always, of course, go to the car, grab the memory card, pop into the computer and watch everything that way. And oftentimes if I'm going through a lot of video, that will be quicker, but the cloud is gonna be maybe more convenient if I'm away from the car and I wanna just access a clip or two and just copy it directly to my computer or to my phone. There's a couple other things that are nice that I don't necessarily use as often. There's things like I can always grab my phone and maybe just live stream and see exactly where the vehicle is as well as uh, the video of what the car is seeing as it's driving down the road. I know some parents like this to keep tabs on their vehicle or a lot of business owners maybe, if they have a whole fleet of vehicles, they can just track what's going on with their company's trucks. Uh, I personally like it for the extra peace in mind in case let's say my vehicle gets stolen, I can see exactly where it is and I can watch the video of what's going on, I can hear what's going on in the car, so I like the extra peace of mind in case something happens, knock on wood. In case the vehicle gets into an accident, it can push a notification to my phone or to maybe my family's phone if I like. It can report the vehicle's location in case of the accident or if I maybe lose the vehicle in a parking lot, I can always just see in real time exactly where it's located. And also when there's updates made available for the dash cam, I can just remotely push an update over the cloud. I don't have to do the traditional thing of, you know, going to Blackview's website, putting the update in a memory card and popping it into the dash cam. I can just streamline the whole process and just have the dash cam update itself remotely, which again is just gonna be more convenient. So all this stuff isn't necessarily super critical, but it's definitely some nice extras to have. Now, with all that said, how do you set this all up and get it running? Uh, well, first of all, of course, you're gonna need to pick up the dash cam. There's different versions of the dash cam all around the world with different uh, LTE antennas based on the different technologies used in different countries. So make sure that you get the one uh, appropriate for your area. And down in the video description, I'm actually gonna have several links to uh, different dash cams for different parts of the world. So definitely take a look at that. You're also gonna need a memory card to record all of the video footage while you drive. Uh, I found that the Blackview memory cards are kind of expensive 
expensive. And so in the video description, I'm also gonna link you to some other really good memory cards that also work great for dash cams that are gonna be much more affordable than the Black V branded ones. And then of course, you're also gonna need a SIM card. Uh, one is not included with the dash cam, and so you're gonna need to go out and pick one up. Now here in the US, uh, officially the DR752 channel LTE supports both AT&T as well as T-Mobile. In Canada, there's Bell, TELUS and Rogers. Now here in the US, I find the best deal is actually gonna be with T-Mobile. I went to a T-Mobile store and I picked up a prepaid SIM card. Uh, it cost me $10 for the SIM card and then I pay $10 a month uh, for two gigs of 4G LTE data and then unlimited 3G data after that. With AT&T, uh, it's only $5 for the SIM card, so it's a little cheaper up front, but you pay uh, $20 a month for the unlimited 4G LTE data. Now, when it comes to finding these data plans, it can be a little bit confusing. So the idea is you're gonna wanna find a data-only uh, tablet plan is what you're gonna wanna look for. Kind of a SIM card that's designed to plug into a tablet, and you can do the exact same thing here uh, with the dash cam. You just put the same SIM card into the dash cam, and it gives it an internet connection. Now, I really like the fact that both of these plans are unlimited. Uh, T-Mobile does have some additional plans that are available to give you uh, more 4G LTE. LTE data, but I don't think it's really necessary. Two gigs is honestly gonna be plenty. Plus after that, it just kind of slows down to 3G speed. So it just takes a little bit longer to upload the clips, but otherwise it still works fine without any overage fees. Now, one of the things that's really nice here is you don't already have to be an AT&T or a T-Mobile customer. So let's say you're maybe a Verizon customer, you can still get one of these SIM cards just fine. Uh, I'm actually a T-Mobile customer right now and it was cheaper just to go get a separate prepaid account. They wanted to charge me $30 up front for the SIM card on my T-Mobile account versus I get just a separate prepaid one. It was just $10 to get the SIM card. So even if you're a Verizon customer or something, you can totally go with AT&T or T-Mobile just fine. Now, speaking of which, I've actually heard some people taking uh, SIM cards from other providers and popping it into the dash cam and it worked. I've heard of somebody doing this with Verizon. I've also heard of somebody doing this with Google Fi. It's not officially supported, but I have seen people have uh, success taking other SIM cards and popping it into the dash cam and then it worked. Now, as far as how much data the dash cam is gonna use, uh, again, most of these plans are gonna be unlimited, but let's say for the sake of discussion, maybe you've got uh, a two gig package per month with a data cap. Now, right here on screen, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up how much data is used uh, when the dash cam is gonna be uploading a clip to the cloud. Uh, so let's say maybe you wanna manually save a clip. You saw something was really interesting on the road uh, and you kind of wave your hand by the dash cam to trigger a manual event. Uh, it's gonna push a one minute clip up to the cloud and also store it in your dash cam's memory card. You can have it do just the front camera or you can also have it do the rear camera as well. And same thing if maybe an event is uh, detected, maybe an impact to hit and run while your car is parked, it can do the exact same thing. Now, let's say you have the dash cam set to the highest video quality level. In this situation, it's gonna be able to push that clip uh, 10 times uh, with your two gig data plan. If you wanna do both the front and rear dash cams, you're gonna be able to push that seven times. If you'd like more, you can always back down the video quality or you can get more data available in your plan. But again, both AT&T and T-Mobile offer unlimited. When it comes to uh, live streaming the video footage, uh, that's gonna stream at 480p, reduced resolution, and so it's only gonna take four and a half megs a minute or 270 megs an hour, which translates to about seven hours of live streaming uh, with a two gig data plan, which honestly should be fine for most people. Next, let's go ahead and quickly run through how you take your SIM card and put it in the dash cam and get everything activated. All right, now getting started, we're gonna need a couple things. Uh, you're gonna need your dash cam, of course, as well as a power cable to plug it in. You're gonna need a SIM card that you purchased from a local cell phone provider. You're gonna need the SIM card tray removal tool that comes packaged with the dash cam. And then you're gonna need the Blackview app that you can download off the App Store. Uh, now the SIM card is gonna go right here in the little SIM card tray, so let's go ahead and install that. Now the easiest way to install the SIM card is to flip the dash cam upside down like this, then grab the SIM card tray removal tool, and you're gonna insert it into this little hole here, press like that, and then the tray is gonna pop out here. Now it's really easy for the SIM card to pop out of the tray and then fall down and get lost somewhere in your car, so be really careful when you're installing this into the dash cam, but you're just gonna wanna carefully slide it into the dash cam and lock it into place like that. Now, a couple things on the dash cam to point out real quick before we continue on. Uh, right here, you've actually got the uh, QR code, which we're gonna need for the installation. You'll also find the default Wi-Fi SSID and password. Uh, you'll find the cloud code as well as the dash cam serial number. Next, let's go ahead and get the dash cam plugged into power and get started here with all of the setup. Now, from the main app screen, you're gonna wanna tap up here and then tap on login. If you don't have an account yet, you can go ahead and sign up for one and then log into your account. Then from the app's home screen, we're gonna go over here and tap on cloud, and then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add this dash cam to our account. So we'll go down here and tap add camera, and then you're gonna to wanna to take your phone's camera and aim it at the QR code, okay? Then we'll hit allow, and it's gonna go ahead and add that camera to our account, perfect. 
Once you do that, you should see the dash cam listed right here in your phone. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, you can just punch in the uh, information here on the side with the cloud code and serial number instead. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and connect the phone to the dash cam over Wi-Fi using the uh, information right here listed on the dash cam. And all this information here is also available on the box of the dash cam too. So you'll wanna open up the list of Wi-Fi networks on your phone. Uh, you should see the Blackview dash cam right there. So we'll go ahead and tap on that. Then once you enter in the default Wi-Fi password, hit join, and it's gonna go ahead and connect to their dash cam. Then once it's connected, we're gonna go back into the Blackview app, and then this time we're gonna hit the Wi-Fi button. It should connect to your dash cam here, and then we're gonna hit the SIM card button here on the top right. Now, when I was first setting it up, all I had to do was just hit save, and then it was all good to go. However, it's probably a good idea to enter in your cell phone provider's APN, and to do that, we're gonna hit this uh, magnifying glass button right there. And then here in the US, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you can see we've got uh, T-Mobile and AT&T listed. Uh, since I'm T-Mobile, I'm just gonna tap that. Then as far as the username and password, you can skip that and then just hit save. Once you do, perfect. Uh, the SIM card is all activated and set up here. And once you've done that, everything is up and running. And so now you're not only able to connect to the dash cam directly over Wi-Fi when you're sitting right next to the dash cam, but you're also able to now access it remotely uh, over the cloud. Now, the rest of the installation is gonna be pretty straightforward. You just take the dash cam, you attach it to your windshield. Uh, same thing with the rear dash cam, you mount it in the back. Uh, you hook up the cable connecting the two dash cams, and then you also plug in the power cable into the front dash cam. As far as the different power sources, you can either plug it directly into your cigarette lighter uh, to have the dash cam powered while you're driving. Uh, if you want it to be powered while you're parked, you can either pick up the uh, Power Magic Pro accessory, which is just kind of a voltage monitor and it allows the dash cam to stay on while you're parked. Uh, it powers the dash cam from your car battery. And then once it drains the car battery too low, it just turns off the dash cam to make sure that you're still able to start your car next time. Uh, the other solution is you can pick up something like a Blackview B124X. It is a dedicated dash cam battery pack that's gonna charge while you drive. And then once you're parked, uh, the dash cam and the LTE connection built into the dash cam, that's all gonna be powered from the dedicated dash cam battery. Blackview advertises about 20 to 24 hours of parked recording times with the battery. And if you want more time, you can also pick up additional expansion batteries. Now, what about compatibility with previous versions of Blackview dash cams? Like let's say maybe you're upgrading from a DR750S. Well, luckily all the wiring and everything is still exactly the same. And so the power cable, uh, the uh, rear dash cam cable, even the rear dash cam itself are actually identical to the DR750S2 channel. Now what's different though, is because the dash cam is physically larger, you're not gonna be able to use the same windshield mounts. You're gonna have to remove the old windshield mount and then take the new dash cam and the new windshield mount and pop that onto the windshield. But once you've done that, again, you can just use your existing wiring and plug it right into the DR750 LTE and it'll all work just fine. Additionally, for those of you who've upgraded from the traditional windshield mount to a rear view mirror mount with the blend mount, because you don't want maybe the dash cam attached directly to the windshield, if you have the one for the DR750S or DR900S, that's not gonna work with the new DR750 LTE. Again, because the dash cam is bigger, you're not gonna be able to take the new dash cam and pop it into the old blend mount. However, blend mount is working on an updated version of their blend mount. And so I'll put a link in the video description to that as well. Uh, if you'd like to upgrade your DR750 LTE's mount to the blend mount. And so other than that, yeah, this is again, effectively a larger version of the DR750S two channel, uh, just now with the LTE built directly into the dash cam, which simplifies the whole cloud connectivity process. Otherwise, everything else is still exactly the same in terms of video quality, uh, parking mode recording, event notifications, etc. If you'd like to pick up one of the dash cams, they are now available. And so I'll put links in the video description for different countries. Plus you can use the coupon code Vortex20 to save 5% off your purchase. Plus down in the description, you're also gonna find some of the additional links that I've mentioned mentioned things like uh, the recommended memory cards, as well as the step-by-step uh, -step tutorial on how to get the SIM card activated once you receive the dash cam and once you pick up the SIM card. And other than that, yeah, that's it. That's just a quick look here at uh, the new DR752 channel LTE. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and you've enjoyed it. Other than that, stay safe, happy driving, and I'll see you in the next video.